Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how you can render professional outfits in Indigo to get realistic and beautiful results like this, whether you need it for a commercial display or uh, you know some sort of uh, corporate image or anything, you can see the beautiful details that we can achieve by getting the right lighting and the right material assignment and everything in Indigo. I'm just going to browse these really quickly. So we're going to learn about assigning different materials, uh, different values to different materials and how you can maximize you know, the effectiveness of your render and make it uh, the most visually appealing uh, way possible. Uh, so you can see uh, the nice lighting combined with the textures. And we're going to talk about, as well about assigning uh, subdivision and uh, different types of uh, ways to render in Indigo to achieve different results. So these are the beautiful results that we've done. And I'm going to show you how you can achieve stuff, uh, results like this in just a moment. So let's go into uh, iClone first of all. We have this uh, construction worker dude uh, just hanging out. What we're going to do is we're going to render this guy. We're going to go through a couple steps to render him to the quality that you just saw. So if I go to my uh, scene manager here, I'm going to check out the lights in my scene. I have three lights currently, three iClone lights. And you can see the angles of those lights if we just pan around over here and the different colors. Uh, so it's purposely set up uh, in a previous, uh, previously uh, that I've done here. And what I'm going to do is we're just going to render this guy out, first of all, using iClone Lights. And I'm going to show you from there how we can improve it vastly. All right, so let's go ahead and in the Indigo tab, I'm just going to go down to select uh, None, iClone Light Only. And we're going to have make sure all those lights are activated under the iClone Light section. And let's just give this a quick render. Uh, let's get a little bit uh, position like this maybe. There we go. And we'll go ahead and give that a quick render. So what you're going to see is in a couple seconds, you're going to see a... Uh, an interesting looking render. If we just zoom out a little bit here, you can see this is our, our result in like uh, time elapsed nine seconds. So we get a decent result like this. And we can improve on this quite significantly. Um, there's a few things we're going to improve, such as the skin texture. You can see there's some sharp shadows under the armpit. But as far as a quick iPhone render, it's not terribly bad. So let's go ahead and talk about how we can improve upon that. I'm just going to stop this for now and we're going to keep it as, as a reference for later on. So first of all, I'm going to show you the Indigo Sun and Sky approach. So Indigo Sun and Sky is a great uh, outdoor way to, uh, to a w great way to render outdoor scenes or outdoor uh, scenarios. So if you select Indigo Sun and Sky, you can align it to a light. I'm going to align it to light one here. And this light, we can use the forward slash key to change the light to whatever direction we want. Let's keep it uh, maybe this direction over here. And what's going to happen now is we're going to get a nice, uh, sunlight coming from this side. We need to make sure that we deactivate all of our iClone lights here. And we'll give this one a quick render and see the results we get with the Indigo Sun and Sky. So again, we, we have not modified the material or anything at all yet. And you can see this is what we get with Indigo Sun and Sky. Let's bring this over here and let's compare it to our previous example. This is this guy. And there you go. Just kind of move it over like this. All right, so you can see the difference between Indigo Sun and Sky and the iClone renders. Uh, we still have those uh, sharp shadows, which we're going to fix in just a moment, but we do have a bit more, you know, detailed uh, appearance on the materials of our character, uh, and uh, as well as the shadows on the sides and everything like that. You can see right here. Um, but we're going to talk about how we can further improve this. But you can see it's a fairly good-looking outdoor render right off the bat, you know, in like less than 10 seconds. Um, so I'm going to show you how you can quickly improve this. Uh, we're going to close on this one right now. We're not going to worry about uh, saving that. And let's go ahead and talk first about the subdivision for the characters. Uh, so because the reason you saw those uh, sharp shadows under the arms is because if you look at the character a little bit closer, we had some jagged edges along the, uh, along the skin and everything like that. What we can do is we can uh, select our character, have our character selected, and go down here to normal and subdivision. And currently it's at smooth normal. I'm going to change that to subdivision high. And that's going to modify the geometry of our character. It's going to create, uh, kind of smooth out the geometry and uh, smooth out the, uh, the shadows as well as the edges of our character's arm. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll actually zoom in a little bit on the character's torso for this example here. And we'll just give this a quick render using the same indigo sun and sky. Now, once we do this, we will have a nice result on the arms. And you can see it takes a little bit longer because it's subdividing everything. And now you can see we get some nice, the shadows are no longer jagged, especially the uh, edges of the arms of our character. Uh, let's compare it to the previous example again here. 
you could see the jagged edges and the jagged shadows, whereas this one, it's very smoothed out, uh, very nice, and much more realistic. So that's subdivision. Uh, in the next section, we're going to talk about adjusting and refining the materials on your character. So this looks fairly nice, fairly realistic, but we can actually enhance it even further. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to close this one down right now, and let's go and select our character's materials. So if we have our character selected, we can use this picker tool, and we can pick like his uh, face, for example. That's going to select the skin head material up here. And under style, we have it set at regular skin. We can switch that over to glowing skin, and the same thing for the skin body. Uh, switch them both over to glowing skin, and let's give that a render, and see how that improves from the previous example. What we're going to see is we're going to see additional specular highlights on our character's skin, such as if uh, he was, you know, uh, sweating a little bit, he's a construction worker after all, or, you know, on a, on a hot summer's day, uh, or just maybe a sheen of oil over top of his skin. So now you can see we get much more realistic results on the skin with that subdivision smooth and the specular highlights from the uh, glowing skin materials. And if you want to enhance that further, make it even shinier, you can just go ahead and pick material, pick your character's, you know, face or uh, skin or whatever, and go into material B, and you can adjust those IR values and everything like that. But this is really how you can get a really quick commercial display style image uh, again, we're, we rendered probably less than uh, 10 seconds here, and this is the result we get. Uh, so very quick and easy render to get to this, to this point right here. And if you wanted to, you know, uh, export this with a transparent background, you can do so as well, just by simply going down here and selecting foreground alpha, and that will take out the background of your character uh, for your character, and you can just composite it onto whatever you want. We'll talk about that in a separate tutorial. Okay. So let's talk about refining the other materials as well. Let's uh, select the uh, hat, for example. Um, actually, I'm going to keep go ahead and render this one more time. We should, probably shouldn't have stopped the previous render. But I'm going to show you how you can pick and modify materials uh, in Indigo now with the helmet as our first selection. So let's uh, pan over to our uh, character. Let's try and make this helmet a bit more metallic, a bit more realistic looking. It looks a little bit flat right now. So I'm going to actually pick material, pick my helmet, and we'll go and change the IOR to maybe a value of uh, something like uh, 2. And I'm going to change my exponent value to something like uh, 500. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a, sort of a specular reflection on the helmet. You can see it's fairly small. Uh, this is sort of like maybe a, a brushed metal type appearance right here. And uh, we have this, a fairly small specular reflection. But we, at least we do have that nice uh, metallic look right now. We can enhance that by adjusting the frontal scale as well. So the larger value we have for the frontal scale, uh, one is the maximum value, and I'll show you a, a massive specular highlight here. Uh, one is the maximum value, like I mentioned right here, and you can get a much more spread out look. So it has a much more brushed appearance uh, than before, where before it was more targeted. So if you have a much more spread out uh, specular highlight like this, it gives it a much more brushed and uh, more plastic or metallic uh, brushed metal appearance. All right, so keep that in mind. You can adjust that to whatever value you want. I kind of like it right here. And there's our dude looking uh, sexy in the sun. All right, let's talk about the shoes now. We can just go ahead and stop this. At uh, 39 seconds, you can see we already get an excellent result like that. Let's talk about the shoes, because the shoes are kind of a challenge on this character. So let's get a quick render of the shoes here. And I'm going to show you the difficulty that we face when rendering, you know, uh, dark, dark materials on occasion. All right, so we're going to get a nice... Uh, indigo render of this guy's shoes and if you ever come across a situation like this where everything seems out of focus you can just go to camera and it's like pick focus point I'll pick the shoes again right there that's just an easy uh, quick solution to get everything back into focus and you can see the problem with the shoes here is that we can't really see the details that we can see in iClone so I'm gonna pick the shoe material really quickly we're gonna go into the material B boots right here and we're actually gonna load up the texture map for the uh, color right here and you can see it right here it's fairly dark now we can lighten that up by changing our gamma value to something like a value of 1.2 for example and that'll lighten it up and now when we render it we should be able to see the nice details on our shoes right there excellent all right and if we wanted to enhance the uh, you know material make it look a little bit more uh, shiny leather like we can do that as well now the IOR value is already pretty high at 1.4 uh, for leather anyways, and the exponent value is fairly low. 
But if we take off this frontal scale uh, specular map, let's go ahead and just deselect that and see what happens. When we take that off, we should see more reflection on the shoes right there. Uh, you can see on the tip of the on the tip of the toes right there, and now it looks more like a much more uh, leather uh, type feel uh, right there. And if we zoom out a little bit, you can see very nice uh, specular details on those shoes. So again, the specular uh, map in the frontal scale uh, channel can sometimes mess around with the specular highlights in Indigo. So keep that in mind as well. All right, let's go ahead and stop this. We don't need a render of our character's shoes. And now that we've done all the uh, skin and material modifications, let's take a look at some uh, alternate methods of rendering uh, that don't really deal with uh, lighting too much. Uh, shadows and everything, I mean. So let's go ahead and give this guy this uh, position again, this camera uh, angle. And what I'm going to do now is, under Indigo, I'm going to select Background Color. And currently our background color is a fairly dark gray. I'm going to go ahead and render this. And initially we're not going to have a very good result. And I'll show you that in just a moment here. Let's stop rendering the other ones here so we can... Oh, it is stopped rendering. All right, there's our 39 second render right there. Uh, back in the background color, which one is it? This one here. Okay, so you can see now that uh, the background color is creating sort of an ambient light for our character. And it doesn't look that good because it's the color is really too dark in general. So let's go ahead and stop this one. Now let's go back into iClone and change our background color by going Control shift p to open up our project settings. And let's change our background color to something like a nice light uh, tan color, something like this. Okay, now it looks kind of strange in iClone, but if we give this a render with our background color settings in Indigo, we'll get a nice kind of uh, even, flat, uh, warm lighting, for our warm ambient lighting for our character. All right, so once we uh, render it out like there, you can see a nice render, a quick render, and that's like 10 second render right there. So uh, it's very fast, very easy to do. And if you don't want to worry about, worry about shadows on your commercialization image or anything like that, this is an excellent option for you. You can just choose a specific background color. Now, in addition to this, if I wanted to, I can also import in an HDR image uh, in Indigo. And I can do that simply by going over to background settings and I can change the uh, texture uh, under environment here. I can load up a texture map. I'm going to load up this Ufizi large HDR image. And you can see we'll get some really interesting lighting going on here. Some very heavy contrast. And uh, the reason for this is I'm going to show you the original image here. Uh, it's over here in Photoshop, which I have loaded up. Right here you can see we have very, very bright, uh, a very, very bright sky. And the ground, the area down here is not very... I mean, Indigo is translating this as fairly dark. So if we go back into Indigo, you can see we get that very strong light uh, coming from above on our character, shining down on his head. And we can modify that, you know, by changing the spectrum value right here. If we go into Spectrum, we currently have the gain at like 10,000. If we change this gain to something like uh, maybe 3,000, for example, what that's going to do is we're going to have a much uh, darker render. You can see much more ominous and conspicuous. Uh, so really what you have to do is adjust the gain value um, to uh, suit the background that you want to render from. And you can also change the rotation as well. If I wanted to just uh, close this down, so it looks like it's shining really strongly from above. If we change this rotation to like uh, 90 degrees, for example, that's basically just going to rotate the HDR image. And now we have a slightly different angle. It looks like now the light's coming from sort of this direction over here. All right, so you can uh, modify that in various ways and get some really kind of, you know, cool results right here if you wanted him to be rendered in a, in a back alley to composite this character in a back alley. Uh, you can do so as well, which uh, is fairly quick and easy results with the HDR background lighting. All right, let's go ahead and uh, we'll minimize this. I want to come back to it later and see how it goes. Let's go into uh, back into iClone here. And we're going to talk about one final thing, which is uh, creating filters and also adjusting... Uh, properties for the eyes. So I'm going to zoom in on my character's face and I'm actually going to replace his head with one of our essential human 100 heads right here. I'm going to load that up. Just because this guy's head has a bit more uh, detail and character to it. All right, He looks like an old uh, salty construction worker. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my forward slash key here. I'm going to make, change the lighting to about a position maybe about right there. So we're kind of reflecting right into our character's eyes. And I'm going to go to my indigo section right here, indigo sun and sky. We're going to align it to light one. 
All right, so the light that I just adjusted there. And let's go ahead and give this one a quick render here. And you can see that once our salty old construction worker loads in here, we get some nice specular reflections off of the eyes. And we can see the nice uh, um, glow off of his uh, skin as well, especially with the, uh, the pores and everything like that. We get some nice details along those pores. Now, if you want to, uh, you know, target that specular highlight, what you need to do is go ahead and pick material. Now, this is going to be fixed in auto convert in uh, iClone 6.5. So if you're not at 6.5 yet, you can follow this procedure. Um, just go to the eyes, and basically we have a cornea and a null material. What you want to do is just go ahead and add a material under that null, and you want to go into here, and you want to change the material type. Currently it's at diffuse. Change it to something like a glossy transparent. And you can go ahead and add a medium there, and it's just going to uh, basically add it in a special uh, medium there. And what you can do then is you can add or change the exponent value here to uh, adjust the amount of reflection. I think it looks okay right now, to be honest. Um, if you wanted to like you know, target the highlight a little bit further, you could do so by uh, you know changing this exponent to a value of like 10, for example. What that's going to do is that's going to have it, uh, you know, uh, very a lot, lot less reflective uh, than it was before. You can see it's uh, maybe a bit more spread out. We'll just keep that at 1,000, I think. I like that uh, original value that we had. And let's go ahead back to here. And you can also adjust the uh, blend value here as well. Uh, you can go into your, your cornea, in addition to that, and change your cornea values. You can see the, the IOR is fairly high at uh, 10.2. Um, if you wanted to change that to something a little bit lower, you can uh, feel free to do so as well. Uh, fifth, not 50, maybe a value of like 5. And uh, then we'll get a uh, you know, uh, smaller specular highlight like this. And you can go in and enhance all those values if you want. The exponent, the frontal scale, uh, like we mentioned with, uh, with other stuff. And what you can see here is basically the indigo sun and sky, the skyline, reflecting off of our character's eyes. Uh, we can go back and change the uh, blend level as well if you want to uh, change the blend level between the two. But I kind of like the result we have right here. Now, if I wanted to uh, put some final touches on this, finishing touches, we can go over here and use tone mapping. If we select our uh, you know filters right here, we can just select like any filter, Advanix uh, 400 CD, and this is, uh, you know, post-rendering uh, uh, modification. You can just use your arrow keys uh, up and down to go down through all of these different uh, filters. And you get really cool looking results like this one. I like this one, for example, really high contrast, like he's in a, in a mine at sunset or something like that. And then we can, uh, you know, pump up the uh, film ISO if you want it to be a little bit brighter. Um, maybe adjust as well. Maybe you want to get too high contrast, but, uh, you know, you can get a nice balance between these two and get a nice result like this just simply by uh, adjusting those values right there and you can go through all the filters and everything like that on your own time just want to show you some post-production and some really nice ways that you can enhance the realism of your character this could be a great uh, commercial render uh, very realistic looking uh, with the nice specular reflections off of those pores and everything like that uh, but that's about it for this tutorial guys thanks